Welcome to another very important lesson and what we're going to learn today is Archimedes principle. To understand this, I think it's important we get a grip of certain concepts which build up towards Archimedes principle and these concepts are more around what is a buoyant force, what is apparent weight and what exactly happens when an object is floating. So let's get on to understand this topic better and to do this consider a tank filled with a liquid let's say it is water let us say we put a sack of water inside this tank so we take this sack of water and immerse it inside this tank so what we know from the earlier lessons we have dealt with is that this sack of water will be subjected to collision by the molecules of water all around it and the pressure on top of the sack would be less than the pressure on the bottom of the sack and therefore the force vectors you can see at the bottom of the sack which is nothing but the collision of the molecules of water with the sack would be longer than the force vectors on the top and well if you take the vector sum of all the forces acting on this sack you'll find that all the horizontal force vectors kind of cancel each other but there will be a net force vector which would be vertical and will act in upward direction and which again is due to the fact that the pressure on the bottom side of the sack is more than the pressure on the top side and that's because of the water column above the bottom side of the sack is more than the length of the water column on the top of the sack. So ultimately you end up getting a force vector pointing in upward direction and this is what we call the buoyant force on any body which is immersed inside any other liquid. So we can say that this is the buoyant force which acts on this body of water or the sack of water in upward direction. Well we also know that there is a force of gravity acting on this mass of liquid or the sack of liquid which would be in downward direction and if we assume that this sack of water is not moving it is stationary it is static we can say that the force of gravity should equal to the buoyant force so if the mass of liquid inside this sack is ml we can say that the force of gravity acting on this sack of water would be fg which would be nothing but ml into g so if you were to write newton's second law of motion for the sack of water which says that the net force acting on a body is equal to the product of its mass into its acceleration then we can say that on the left hand side the net force is a buoyant force which is acting in upward direction and we'll take it as positive all vectors pointing in upward direction to be taken as positive and the force of gravity acting in the downward direction and this should equal zero because the acceleration is zero the object is stationary so if this is the case we can say that the buoyant force is nothing but equal to the force of gravity which in turn is equal to mass of the liquid into g so what you establish here is that a buoyant force acting on any mass enclosed within the boundaries of such a sack would be ml into g and you must remember that this buoyant force would always be ml into g as long as the, the shape of the sack is same as this it does not really depend on what is inside this sack because you must remember this buoyant force is happening on account of the molecules of liquid outside which are hitting this sack and has got nothing to do what is the liquid inside the sack or what is the solid inside the sack so the buoyant force on such a sack immersed in this tank of water is ml into g now let's go ahead and imagine if you were to replace the liquid inside the sack with iron what would happen so now what we've done is we've removed all the liquid from the sack and we have filled it with iron such that the shape of the body remains unchanged so once again we can say well there is a buoyant force acting on this body which is filled with iron and that buoyant force remains unchanged and is equal to fb well we also know that this piece of iron or this sack of iron is not going to stay it's going to go down which essentially means that the force of gravity 
which is acting in downward direction would be more than the buoyant force. So let's write this as Fg and this time around say this is the mass of iron. We can say that Fn is equal to Ma and all the forces acting on this sack of iron are buoyant force acting in upward direction minus the force of gravity acting in downward direction and the force of gravity would be the mass of iron into G which should equal the mass of iron into its acceleration and we'll go ahead and substitute the value of the buoyant force which we know is ml into g so we write buoyant force as ml into g minus mi into g should equal to mass of iron into acceleration and what you'll find is that the acceleration therefore equals ml upon mi minus 1 into g and what you can quickly observe is that ml upon mi is a negative number because mass of liquid in the same sac would be less than the mass of iron within the same sac so this would be less than one and therefore the right hand side becomes negative so we can say here that a is less than zero or negative which makes a lot of sense because the net acceleration would be in the downward direction because we have taken all vectors pointing in downward direction as negative and therefore you can see that since the net acceleration is a downward direction it is in line with the fact that this piece of iron is going to sink or go down now let us say instead of iron we had filled this sack with wood once again we write all the forces acting on this sack which has been filled with wood but retains a shape as it was in the first case so we know that there will be a buoyant force acting on it which will be in the upward direction and it remains unchanged so let's write this as fb once again and the force of gravity will be in the downward direction but this time around it being wood the force of gravity the vector would be smaller in length than the buoyant force so let's write this as a force of gravity on this sack of wood and if you were to once again write Newton's second law of motion then we can say that net force acting on this sack of wood is equal to the product of mass of this wood into its acceleration and we can see that the net force is nothing but the buoyant force acting in upward direction minus the force of gravity acting in downward direction and this should equal to the product of mass of wood into its net acceleration so we go ahead and write that the buoyant force here is ml into g minus the force of gravity is mass of wood into g which should equal to the mass of wood into a and if you go ahead and find the value of acceleration what you'll find is a is equal to ml upon mw or the mass of wood minus 1 into g and what you'll once again observe is that ml upon mw or the mass of liquid upon mass of wood would be a number greater than 1 because the mass of liquid would be more than that of wood and if this is the case then this would be a positive quantity and a would therefore be greater than 0 or positive and this once again makes a lot of sense because then the acceleration vector would point in upward direction which essentially shows the piece of wood would kind of bounce up and move towards the top. So the most important part of this entire explanation is that there is something called a buoyant force which acts on a body when it is submerged in a liquid and this is equal to ml into g or in a more formal way it is expressed as Archimedes principle which says that when a body is fully or partially submerged in a fluid a buoyant force Fb from the surrounding fluid acts on the body and the force is directed upward and has a magnitude equal to the weight of the fluid that has been displaced by the body. So with this in the background let's go ahead and understand what is flotation. So assume that there is a piece of wood or something which is floating in water 
So the forces acting on this body would be the brain force which acts in upward direction and the force of gravity which acts in downward direction. And the fact that it is floating, it is stationary, it is not moving up and down goes on to show that the two forces are equal. And if you were to write this in Newton's second law of motion, we can say that the net force on this body is equal to the product of mass and acceleration and we know A here is zero and the net force is nothing but Fb minus Fg and this should equal to zero which essentially goes on to show that the Brian force which can be expressed as ml into G where ml is the mass of liquid displaced minus mg where m is the mass of the solid itself should equal to zero and here ml is nothing but the mass of liquid displaced. So if you were to further simplify this what you'll find is that ml equals to m or we can say that when a body is floating it displaces the mass of liquid equal to its own mass or you could also say that when a body is floating it displaces a weight of liquid equal to its own weight so that's a necessary condition for flotation so let's go ahead and understand flotation a little better so if you were to take the same tank of liquid and put a block of wood inside such that part of it is floating and part of it is outside or rather part of it is submerged and part of it is exposed outside the liquid so if this is the case and if we were to write the dimensions of this block of wood and if we assume this is the length this is the width and this is the height and if you to assume that the submerged height is small h then if we were to analyze all the forces acting on this body what we can say is that it is subjected to the Bruin force acting in upward direction a force of gravity acting in the downward direction and if you were to express a Bruin force as fb is equal to the mass of liquid displaced into gravity we know that the mass of liquid displaced is equal to the density of the liquid into the length of the block into width of the block into the height of the block which is submerged inside because only the submerged part of this block of wood is displacing water and we'll go ahead and multiply this with g likewise we can express the force of gravity on this block again as a product of its own mass into gravity and this should equal rho where rho is the density of this is of this block which is floating on top into l into w into capital h which is the volume of the block into g so remember l into w into small h is the volume of the block which is submerged inside the liquid and that is the volume which is getting displaced into its into the density of liquid gives you the mass of liquid displaced while here this mass is that of the block itself and therefore we are taking the density of the block into its length into its width into its height now we've just understood that when a body is floating the buoyant force on the body should equal to the gravitational force on the body and if this is the case we can equate both the equations let's say this is equation one this is equation two we can equate the two and say that rho l l w small h into g should equal density of the piece of block into its length into its width into its height into g and what you find is that the height the small h that is submerged would equal to the density of the block into the total height of the block divided by the density of the liquid now let us assume that this piece of block and let's say it's wood 
is actually submerged inside water. So if you were once again to write all the forces acting on this block of wood, you can say, well, there's a buoyant force acting on this in the upward direction and there's a force of gravity acting in the downward direction. But we know that this piece of wood is going to bounce up. It's going to go up. So this is not under equilibrium. And if you were to write Newton's second law of motion over here and say that the net force on this block is equal to the product of mass and acceleration, we can once again write that the net force is nothing but Fb acting in upward direction minus Fg acting in downward direction. And this should equal to the product of mass of the wood into its acceleration. So let's go ahead and write what is the buoyant force. So the buoyant force here would be equal to the mass of liquid displaced into G. But this time the mass of liquid displaced would be the volume equal to the volume of the block because the entire volume of the block is inside water and, and its own volume will displace the water which would now be equal to density of the liquid into length of the block into width of the block into capital H this time into G. So you can see that since the entire block is submerged inside the water, we've taken the volume of the block itself to define what is the volume of water displaced and force of gravity will remain unchanged and will equal to the mass of the block into gravity which would equal to the density of the block into L into L into W into H into G. And if you were to substitute these two values into this equation, what you'll get is rho L into L W H G minus rho L W H into G should equal to mass into acceleration. And here mass is that of the solid and therefore we'll write it as density of the solid or the density of the block into its volume which is LWH into G. I'm sorry, it'll be into A because that's what we need to find. And if you solve for A, what you'll get is A is equal to, and you can see a lot of terms are getting canceled off. And eventually what you get is A is equal to rho L upon rho or the density of the liquid upon density of the block minus 1 into G. And once again, what you'll find is that rho liquid upon rho is greater than 1 because density of liquid is greater than that of wood. And here rho has been taken as the density of wood or this piece of object. And this is greater than 1. And therefore, this expression is positive, thereby giving A as a value greater than 0 which again makes sense because it shows that the net force net acceleration is in the upward direction, which goes on to show that the block of wood would tend to move up due to the buoyant force being more than the force of gravity.